Yes, you are. Creating the mountains and and the uh, uh, and snow on them, which is a fairly easy technique to do if you look it up. And you can create a snow scene in about ten seconds flat. I'm exaggerating slightly, but and after that it was wow. <laughs> I'm looking and thinking that really is is not a good picture, but um, it it impresses some people when you can create something like that in a relatively short period of time, even if it isn't actually very good because the real what makes it really special is is sort of all the, the when you start adding the shading and things to to a picture like that but um, no I, I thank you for the compliment but I don't actually believe I'm anything like as uh, uh, as as uh, good as Bob Ross I really wish I was actually. That would be fantastic. a bit hot. Um, okay, well, thank you very much for the compliment, uh, Bubbles. I, I um, <laughs> everybody tells tells not everybody. Okay, quite a few people tell me I've got a soothing voice or uh, a radio voice or or if words effectively saying the same thing. Um, I've even been accused of putting people to sleep uh, with with my voice, not the content, but the voice. <laughs> Um, it's my natural voice though it is how I normally talk as far as I'm aware it could be that I have learned to slow down so I don't talk as fast as I would do if I'm not broadcasting I'm talking to somebody in the room I will be talking a lot faster and I think slowing down tends to give your voice a more soothing or a, or a softer sound and that's something that I learned uh, a while, long while ago now when I did lecturing for a couple of years and it, it helps to have a voice that people can listen to rather than a grating voice or it's slow enough for people who are not used to the accent to be able to to follow it but uh, a radio voice mm. I've also understand it helps to try and keep the errs out of my voice as well I don't always succeed, but slowing down helps that enormously. I think on my second stream I got actually accused of putting the voice on on purpose or using some uh, linguistic techniques to get people to, to lull people into staying in the stream. So, is it working? <laughs> I'm not, in case anybody didn't realise that was a joke. It is my natural natural voice that I would use actually when I'm lecturing, as I mentioned. It's not quite the same as when I'm speaking uh, person to person, but close enough. Right, well that's the that's the side of his nose. This bit around here is going to be a little tiny, really little tiny things coming uh, down to, uh, and what I'm going to do is just shade his nose I think rather than try and put hairs on it. There isn't, of course the, the nose of the cat itself which you hopefully can maybe see on, on the reference image, but is is a leather-like texture because there is no fur on it. It is just the skin, but it's it's quite um, it's not soft skin. It's it's kind of like the skin maybe on your feet, which is is like a thicker skin. Um, as I say, often get I'd, I'd often refer to it as, as like a leather 
it's not but a leather type of, of feeling on the nose and uh, just coming away over the top of the nose then is is a it's almost bald uh, and the pigment by the way of a cat is actually in its skin it's not not the fur per se or the fur does have pigment in uh, in it a lot of the pigmenting effect comes from the from the skin so along his nose here it is kind of bald just above the leathery bit of the nose uh, and the, the fur really only starts up around you know the nose is down here and the fur really only starts around this sort of area here yes I did lost <laughs> completely forgot to uh, to do it uh, I, I I haven't bothered now because I'm I'm about to wrap up but I'll uh, I'm going to update it just after the stream so that I don't make that mistake for uh, for tomorrow but thank you for uh, for mentioning it again because it's just as likely that I'd forget in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that tool down I'm going to let my finger cool off because it is quite warm the, the tool itself it's as I say it's, it's about the heat of a, a candle flame really um, it's it's in the order of just a, a few watts maybe 10 watts of power at most um, if I turn it right up probably about 20 watts of power it's it's not a great deal it runs um, I've forgotten whether what this tool actually runs at but these machines run anywhere between about one and a half and three volts uh, is the voltage to supply to the tip but they then uh, supply it with anything up to like about 10 amps of current so that's you know if you're not familiar with the electronic mass you multiply the current by the volts to give you the watts so one and a half volts at 10 amps is about 10 15 watts um, so it's uh, it's kind of safe it's a safe voltage but it's not safe to touch because it's hot <laughs> um, but it, even though you know 10 watts isn't actually a lot of power it's enough obviously to cook the sap uh, and it's enough to make it a rather uncomfortable but um, you know your light bulbs most of your light bulbs are significantly hotter than that and more power uh, I shall turn him around so that we actually look at him the right way around um, but I am uh, now a little bit warm. Uh, I've been bent over a bit, so I'm going to sit back and uh, just take a rest for a couple of minutes. So if there's anybody um, that has any questions, whilst I'm actually concentrating on chat and taking a drink, I'm, I'm going to be wrapping up the stream. So, uh, But uh, there's an opportunity here if anybody has any particular questions about pyrography. And M Mickey Mouse, thank you very much for following. That's very kind of you. I trust you're enjoying what you're seeing and thank you for wanting to come back and see more. Desney26 also thank you for uh, uh, for following. Uh, Ian, you've now taken over the uh, the spot on screen. So uh, thank you uh, thank you both for uh, for joining. And, uh, and taking a look at uh, what's going on here. Uh, I will be doing pyrography for uh, this piece will probably take um, about a week to do. Uh, streams generally last a couple of hours so it's about 10 to 12 hours worth of, uh, of work in a piece this size uh, and, and with a lot of fur like this. So you know we'll be we'll be doing this for a while before uh, we move on to something and, and after this we'll be doing a different form of art. I'm not quite sure what yet. I've got uh, quite a few to pick from, but we shall see when we get there. Uh, do I have a script? Yes, I do. Certainly. Uh, we can quite easily do an art show at this moment in time. Um, I have I have one piece of scraper board that I can show you, and only one piece. Uh, so I will uh, I will show you the very, very first scraper board project or piece that I've ever done. It was done on stream. I'd never even touched scraper board before this. So, be a little kind. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, see, uh, unfortunately, there's a bit of a glare coming off the off the light, but um, that's not not too bad. Um, that's a gentleman called John Miles. He's a 
musician and songwriter um, and he has been in the charts for uh, well over quite a few many years now although he's not uh, he's not played in a band uh, in his with his band uh, for uh, quite a few years he's he now uh, focuses exclusively within the industry itself more than actually as a performer but he is the musical director and um, lead guitarist for Tina Turner when she tours in Europe I don't know about the States and he is also musical director he performs in and also organises Night of the Poms in Europe So, um, but that is the very first piece that I did, and I am really pleased with the uh, the shirt. I, I absolutely find that f uh, amazing. And uh, when, if if you'd have been here as I was doing the stream when I did the mouth, I was extremely worried that I'd made it too bright and the ear as well. And yet, when I've added the rest in, they've just come out just about right. The mouse is still a bit bright, but it's not too bad. And so I'm, I'm really pleased with that, especially as it's my very first piece. I'm kind of boasting, really, you know. <laughs> and I kind of did set it up a little bit too, <laughs> to that way. But um, it's, it's an illustration of, of the monochrome work that I actually like doing. I love doing monochrome work, whether it's airbrushing, uh, scraper board now. Um, as well that's kind of the ultimate monochrome because it's black or white and you're just doing it by the shapes that you you scrape and I know you can colour it and things but um, just it's a, an expression of that uh, and of course the pyrography which is a monochrome artwork even though it's not black and white it, it's brown and white but uh, yeah so that's uh, John Miles and scraper board and of course carving is, is the other thing that I've been doing uh, doing on stream, relief carving. So this is actually a present for my wife, so I'm, I'm keeping it fairly... Um, it sits on this board and it sits somewhere safe. So I'm just going to put it back so it doesn't accidentally get scratched or anything like that. And thank you for that uh, comment, Bubbles, the uh, Bubbles the Monkey. Um, I am pleased you think so. I don't think it's quite got to the level of awesome, but I think it's got to the level of damn good. <laughs> thank you. Oh, don't worry about the uh, the short form. A lot of people call me that. Uh, I like uh, waffles, okay. Um, or Zaba, usually, which then confuses a lot of people because they then think I'm female rather than male but it's uh, not particularly a problem okay well if any say if anybody has any particular questions you've got a couple of minutes whilst I just have another drink and then uh, I, I will fortunately be wrapping up the stream I uh, have a little bit little opportunity then to have another drink and uh, and see if there's any any other uh, streamers around unfortunately freeze take you a couple of nights off otherwise you'd now find me on on free stream but uh, uh i guess you're taking the whole week off are you free or un until you feel like it but uh I'd, you know follow free um now while i see you is still in stream um and so when he does actually come on stream then you can uh, you can take a look at, at his artwork which is uh, amazing to watch um, uh, airbrushing uh, well uh, it's a personal opinion but I always find airbrushing amazing to watch uh, th because airbrushing tends to get built up in layers and you you know as, as the layers get built up it gets clearer and clearer and clearer as to just exactly what you uh, you're producing and uh, the monochrome work that free uh, free does is, is a fascinating one. Uh, I, I find it absolutely amazing how uh, and his um, Darth Vader mask is, is an example of it. How white paint can look black. 
You look at you look at it, you when if if you do see a stream, persuade him to show you one of the Darth Vader's, which won't be very difficult. Um, but it looks it, it's a black background and it's a black mask on a black background. And the background and the mask are exactly the same colour. And the only the only bits is, is the white paint which is used to create the highlights and the white paint looks black. <laughs> I can't really describe it any other way. It's a fascinating effect. And I should of course say since Lost in House has been here of course Lost is also a streamer and has been streaming uh, in the music category. She's uh, a DJ just sounds somewhat uh, anticlimactic lost you're good at what you do um, feel free to describe it if you like but um, that's another uh, another stream that you uh, you should check out as well and uh, I understand bubbles also streams so um, you know check uh, check everybody out it's um, it's an amazing community I think is is creative and seeing uh, you know everybody sort of has a uh, look at each other's work and uh, and, and it, it's a, a friendly community to be in so I encourage you just to have a look around at any time and uh, there's quite likely to be something that's worth uh, worth looking at and, and remembering for next time but it's now coming up to half past ten in the UK so if there's anybody on stream that would uh, like to know when I go live again Apart from encouraging you to push the follow button, so Twitch may tell you. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. Um, I don't tweet really anything but the fact that I'm going live, so you'll get notified of that way. But uh, generally speaking, I am streaming, give or take personal reasons, uh, seven nights a week from 8pm uh, British time which is 7 p.m. GMT and uh, to give you a quick way of calculating it's two and a half hours ago from whatever time it is where you are now and I generally st stream until around about 10 o'clock I've gone on a little bit later tonight and uh, then uh, uh, Oh, sorry, I've lost completely lost train of thought. But I, I generally stream until ten o'clock at night, a couple of hours, which is which is quite a lot of work to do in one go on uh, on, on some of these pieces. Um, 